Hey, what's up, lads, laddies, lovers, and adventurers alike? Today, my friend, you're in luck, because we'll be setting out on a grand adventure and finally import a strange blue-looking alien only like, uh, two years after the update. But okay, we haven't been in this world that long. In the process, we'll be taking an in-depth look at this wild blue alien-looking creature and talking about uses for it in your world and in mine. Uh, however, here's the thing, the mob, from my experience with it, not very much experience, but experience with it, hey, it has a little bit of a mind of its own, uh, its own desire and dreams and hopes and everything like that. What I'm saying here is, treat chapels. It's been too long. Ah, the LA. Look at this little guy. This is a look into the future. Is it a trick of editing? The world may never know. The LA. This little guy it needs a home sweet home. Eventually, it's certain for sure if nothing could go wrong, we will import it all the way over to the base and give it a nice sweet spot to live. I was looking around at the base and today's kind of a big momentous occasion. For the very first time ever, we're going to actually expand our base down the beautiful Swedish Fjord. For this little beautiful build right here that we're going to kick off, I did a little bit of an explore. Whoa, that looks so grand. Oh, that looks so beautiful. I can't get over the shaders. Complimentary shaders. I think I've fallen in love with them. Last episode, our, our romance blossomed and bloomed live on camera. And this episode, it, it gets mad. And a little bit a little bit deep i suppose oh no way no flipping way no way i finally get to actually break the shovel in only one episode after i made it this shovel right here instant mining dirt because it's efficiency five diamond shovel it's fortune three sure sure whatever maybe i still want to get so touched on it whatever oh that's a dream usually that would have taken me so long to do oh i love it why didn't you guys have me make a shovel earlier Come on, you were gatekeeping. You know what? That put me in such a bad mood. I'm done with it. Flower, pink petals, get out of here. You're trash, you're garbage. Nobody likes you. I hate you, actually. And nobody likes you. Nobody likes you and I hate you. Please. Oh. <laughs> and this is awkward. I think I found where I was, like, clearing and wiping chunks. Look at that clean line. I would have thought the trees would have regenerated, like, exactly how they did before. <laughs> That's so funny looking. That's so weird. Fully loyal friend who 100% of the time reminds me to make a precious diamond shovel because they're actually overpowered or not. Yeah, I'm all that business or not. I have a vision for the build and I would like to share it with you. I was thinking maybe first things first here, create a grand and beautiful hole. The bone so how did you get over here? <laughs> My delighted building friend. Well, alrighty then, a surprise, a welcome surprise. Anyways, I was thinking majestic grand, a beautiful circle, circling like circles do, all the way around this area right here. This build that I'm creating for this mob, I think I want it to be raised up in the air and kind of floating. I think that could go hard. So today, here on these little episodes where we're gonna bone so actually you wait right there. So today, here on these episodes, we're gonna do a little bit of exploring, a little bit of mob capturing, a little bit of mob mechanicking, and of course a little bit of building. I ah, look, all these years of making videos, and I still just I never really know the best way to do it. Like do I talk about the build a lot? Do I talk about the build a little? What about the adventure part? It's not really about the destination. It's about the journey, right? But then again, it's also very much so about the destination here. Ah, oh, yes, gosh. Decisions, decisions. I guess I'm lucky that today's build is a relatively simple, beautiful one. Oh, otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Oh, yes. Our build right here is just about fully complete now. I figured to add a little bit of, like, the variation to the build, like the builders say to do, I do deep slate bricks with dark oak wood, and just like that, we've got ourselves a brand new build with a huge tree grown perfectly in the middle. Hold on, hold on. Let me chop this down. I'm too excited. All right, all right. Look, if I'm being completely honest, I, I am trolling a little bit. The build, I have a vision for this build. What I wanted to maybe do here is take blue dye and white dye, maybe take them, smash them together just like that. Inside of the furnaces, I'm smelting up a little bit of glass. I don't know, to be honest, if I'm going to have enough sand over here, so we might have to, like, do the build as much as we can, then come back around and finish it off once we're back with our new friends. Please, allow me to introduce you to one of my favorite building sites of all time. It's called Plots. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. One of my favorite things that you can do on plots is make circles. One of my other favorite, favorite things you can make on plots is make spears and spears. That's where we're at today, baby. Whether you want a small spear, 
spear, or you want like maybe a giant. I, I built a giant, giant planet, planet in hardcore, hardcore Minecraft. Minecraft. A spear. No matter what kind of spear you're looking for, it's got it for you. If I say want a spear with a radius, I think it is, or maybe it's diameter of 128, it's going to be ahead just about 42,000 blocks. No big deal. Today, if I want a circle with maybe 18, then in total for the full globe, it will be 768 blocks. But we could chop it. You see us here today with our beautiful brand new build. Well, we don't need a full sphere. All that I need on this little work of art right here to turn it into a masterpiece is going to be half of a sphere. A dome. Yes, the applause. Every single build that we've built inside of this world so far has been a build. But I have not once utilized one of my favorite building techniques ever. It instantly makes a build feel fancy and grand. It instantly adds a lot of depth and detail to it. Yes, of course, there's only one type of thing that I could do on this build. And that's going to be a dome. We'll put a dome on top of it. And even better, the dome of the dome. It will be light blue because of course our sweet friends that we'll be meeting in just a few more minutes here Ah, oh, well, they're light blue, too So what I could do here to make my dome exactly perfect is first things first set my diameter It's 18. That's perfect 18 across after that on this toggle I can go layer by layer here and take a look at what's going on for me What I want to do is build the top half of the dome that means I would probably end up starting somewhere around right here or something and then basically go layer by layer and essentially copy what the blocks are telling me to do. I was watching Pixel Rift's episode of his survival guide series and he was talking about inspiration. Definitely don't be afraid to use it. Well, I would like to add on to that and say things like plots or whatever that might help you with a tricky shape. Definitely don't be afraid to use that either. I hate to say it, I, I really do, because I wish it wasn't true, but a circle is one of those shapes in Minecraft where, like, if you don't get it exactly right, it's just gonna look wrong, or at least, like, more so like a globe. You could pull off maybe a slightly oval circle, but a wrong dome, I mean, it's already an impressive vision that you have going for your build. If you get it a little bit wrong and then it just looks odd, I mean, it's very disappointing. For that reason, even to this day, after I built something like 50,000 domes or more, Plots is still one of my greatest friends of all time. All right, so I'm looking around at our build uh, so far and what we have. I think this part of the build right here is where I'm going to start to taper this thing up. But I'm looking at the dimensions here, and I think I taper up like that. It's a little bit confusing, I'll admit it. I'm a fool, the clown. In fact, the entire circus. No, it's not a little bit confusing. I'm looking at my plots. I was looking at my plots trying to figure out why it's not lining up. It's because I was doing 18 on the inside, not including the outside. So that's 19 and that's 20. The dome, it grows larger and larger by the minute, I guess. I, I don't think that'll be a big deal, though. Should be fine. <laughs> You know what? Cut, 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 cut. It's wrong. <laughs> it's all wrong. One near crisis later and we're back. Oh, we're back and we're better than ever. Just about the final thing that I need to do, at least over here in this side of the road, is a little bit of final tree fiddle. Finishing, that's the word, that's the word for it. Look at this wall that I built. It's a simple wall. I wanted a wall that wouldn't really like stick out too much. It just kind of blends in. Across the road, boom. I fixed the build. Usually I would commit, you know, I'm a go big or go home type of lad, but I was taking a look at the build. Like I took a step back from over here and the dome was way overpowering the lower part of the build so it was off balance if i were to have built to this lower section like maybe one or two blocks taller it would have been good but it was no bueno <laughs> in the meantime i've noticed our friend over here ah uh, the villagers are overrunning the base i don't know what's going on the villager breeder i probably should shut that thing off it's so noisy 
But back over here at the build side, I detailed the side of the build and made it a little bit more spicy. I put a grand window right there, and then I kind of started to put trap doors on there, and then logs wrapping around the side. I thought fences broke up the wood too, and then inside, oh, inside, it's adorable. It's precious. Where is it? A small kitten. I don't have the fish that I need to actually be able to tame said tiny kitten, but it's kind of beautiful kind of beautiful maybe i'll put a boat down and capture you or not either way though i need the grass to grow all the way up to the real floor of this build today what i was thinking and what i thought might be kind of beautiful is imagine a big dome in here i ran out of glass but imagine a big dome in here with la flying all over the place for this build i was inspired by that moment that we had a couple episodes ago when we were building that tower where i saw a stained glass hue on the floor and from that moment i just fell in love with that idea so anyways though that's where the build's at it's just about done and that's what i'm thinking well, let's talk about la <clears throat> la the la is a fascinating minecraft mob that is unlike anything else in the game it's essentially a moving flying floating hopper however this mob is also a tortured mob the next time you're looking for la inside of your world it's a little bit sad cruel even the illagers they hate the la for some strange reason lore wise there's definitely something going on here if you're looking for the la try and find a woodland mansion there's a jail room that can spawn and you could have a ton of la inside of it one mansion can actually have a couple different jail rooms too so you could be loaded up but that's not the only place that you could go out into your world and find an la there is another place that might be a little bit more common but it's a little bit more unlikely that you'll have LA there. So a situation happened inside of the nether. It seems our dear friend, the piglin, in search and hopes of a brand new nether hub or something, it seems to have captured a pet kitten. Aww. Aww. Adorable, adorable. Anyways, there's this place that we located like a million years ago, and I have never set foot close enough to tell if we have the, the ideal circumstances, you could say. And look, uh, so far into the episode, I backup plans. I I have none. I have no backup plans at all. Outpost, sweet outpost, the other location you could locate alley at it. It almost looks like with those cage looking structures, we might just get lucky and have a couple alley over this outpost. Planning and preparation. This is a rescue mission, a high stakes rescue mission. Not only is my life at stake, but Okay, no, only my life is at stake. Alley regenerate health, like basically constantly. The odds, the chance that a pillager would not only be able to target an alley and hit it with an arrow, but repeatedly do it, they bounce around quite a bit, while overpowering their whole health regen thing, it's not gonna happen. So, outpost, oh outpost, with these brand new Death Strider boots, oh, it's beautiful under the water, it's beautiful, and it's also really quick moving, I don't even need a boat anymore. Oh, that's so gorgeous looking though. Anyways, outpost, outpost, if you're doing the outpost method, step number one, before we charge into the outpost, we want to kind of stake out the situation, kind of like take a look at what we have. Looks like we've got some cages over there and there and then over there and there. We're looking for a specific type of cage. At a pillager outpost, a couple different types of cages can generate. We could have an iron golem cage, an empty iron golem cage, an empty cage, or an alley cage. Please, please have an alley cage. I, it looks a little empty. Alley cage, my final hope. Are you an alley cage? No, no, my heart, my heart and soul. <gasps> Okay, we do. I was nervous. I was so nervous that we were gonna have an LA cage here. So with LA, because they're entities and a different kind of entity, they kind of get unloaded if you go too far away. It's almost like a villager. Oh, we got an LA over there. Before we move in, we wanna scope this out and see what we have over this outpost. It looks like this might be an easy shot with their LA cage being located over there. Long story short, you're going for the alley. There's no real reason to charge into the tower at all. They'll never be there. They'll be on the outside in a cage if they're gonna be there. However, 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 rumor has it, legend has it, that there's a chest at the top of the tower, so we charge into battle. I'm looking for the chest. I want the treasure. The LA, my sweet friends, I will come back to you. Wait inside of this cage. There's a ceiling on it. They can't go anywhere. But inside of this thing, there's a treasure chest, and I need it. I can't believe it up until this point. We've never taken a look at any outposts. There's no pillagers. We walk in here. Come on, piece of cake. I hear you, but you're too slow. Armor trim? Not even a goat horn. Not even a flipping goat horn. This is tragic. I hate it. Let's get out of here. 
All right, so there's layers to this operation right here. Apparently, no pillagers are going to spawn. It's probably something to do with all the water around it, but there's layers here. My opinion, best move with the alley. Step number one, we locate him. Step number two, we get something on the hotbar that doesn't matter that much, and we get an axe, and we charge into battle. This is a cakewalk. It's not even like... I try and like make it a, like seem like an intense operation, but look at this. We just walk in here. There's no pillagers. Maybe you will be overwhelmed, and maybe not. Quickly, the alley are going to want to move around. We need to give them an item. Any item will do. As soon as I give them an item, they're my alley and will lock on to me and follow me. You have to be careful, though, because in these cages, they can kind of get, like, stuck on some of the blocks. You might have to, like, push them, nudge them to get them out of the cages. Oh, righty then. And just like that, home sweet home, I guess this is my outpost because nobody is spawning here. Any extra alley? No. Any extra iron golem? Yes, but you live here, okay, buddy? You stay there. I guess that was our high stakes rescue mission. Let's get back home sweet home. Now the alley, once you give them an item, they have this cool like following targeting mechanic. It's almost like a pet. As long as you've given, oh my God, this is terrifying from under the water. <laughs> it's terrifying, they can't go under the water. But as long as you've given them, given them an item, they're gonna follow you from a pretty good distance away. And their following AI is pretty smart. So as long as you make sure you get them out of the cage all the way, they should be able to follow you away. All right, now this is the part that I admitted I get a little bit nervous for. We need to get the alley into the nether. Getting them into the nether, it might be a little bit tricky, but basically, if we can stand on the other side of the portal, they might be able to just zoom right on through. I know one did. You, friend, come here. Come over here. Come, come, come a little bit closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I move around and get the angle just right, I think, no. Come on, buddy, friend. Cooperate. I need you to zoom right through the portal for me. Come on. A lead might help this operate. No, 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 no. Look, yeah, come here. Yeah, I see you. Come here. Come Come here, straight shot, right over to me. Right over to me, dear friend, let's go. Oh, let's go. All right, now, maybe I should have done this beforehand, but it doesn't really matter. They're inside of the nether. They should be perfectly fine. I know what's going on over there. Before we go back home, sweet home, a little bit more sand is exactly what's on the menu for me. You know what, in hindsight, I guess it's 2020 or whatever they say, I, this would have been the perfect uh, opportunity to showcase what the alley actually does. <laughs> My bad. Back over inside of the nether, my alley friends are sitting, waiting, ready for me. As quick as possible, I need to get away from this portal because they're going to accidentally drift back into it. I think I'll go ahead and take this run the good old-fashioned way, but what I'm going to do is utilize our nether hub transport system and just walk in it to get the alley all the way back home sweet home. I'm sure the boat might work, like they might be able to keep up, or at the least, like you ride the boat and go a little bit slow, but what could I say? I'm an old-fashioned type of guy. Alrighty, and so back home, sweet home, just about. This is gonna be the hardest part of the episode. You friends, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Maybe I'll like dig a small hallway on the other side of the portal. Maybe, maybe you could just follow me right into the portal like this or something. Ah, uh, it's gonna be so hard. No, okay, come on, come on. I feel like this is how I do it. I, I guess I could use blocks to lure them, but maybe I make a little tunnel right here and they, they've got to rock it through. Come on, buddy. Hey, come come to me. Come to me. All right, fine. Fly up to the ceiling of the nether. My other option is place a block that they want to pick up right in front of the portal. Something like that. And no. Okay, okay well, you gave me the advancement. It's nice, but you were meant to go to the portal. Come on, come on friend. Come on. All right, maybe we put a block over here. Like one block, and then they'll probably like try and fly over to me and get the block, but go right through the portal, right? Over on the other side of the portal, give it a second, we load middle of the night, but LA, I want, no, yes, too beautiful LA. Oh, you're so beautiful, you've done it, you're so smart. However, it's the middle of the night, let's roll today. Back over at their new home sweet home, LA, my dear friends, please follow me into the entrance. All right, perfect, just as expected. So the advancement, it kind of gave it away right there. You've got a friend of me, have an LA deliver items to you. If you've never seen the alley in your life before, well, <laughs> look, I don't blame you. It, it was added and then kind of almost forgotten about. If you've never seen an alley in your life before and have no clue what they're for, well, basically, it's for picking up items and bringing them over to you or a designated drop station. If I give an alley a piece of dirt, then any dirt that it sees on the ground nearby, it's going to fly around, pick it up, and try and bring it back over to me and throw it to me. It's pretty beautiful. Because their number one goal in life is to pick up items and bring it to you. That means using items is a great way to lure them around. If I want the alley to maybe like come a little closer to me, I could drop a dirt block on the ground. It'll maybe fly over to me and pick it up and come to me. Now the alley, it's beautiful, but it could also have a little bit of a mind of its own. If you take the item away from it, it, it might just wander off and fly off into the sunset. Um, terrible.
Alas and so, it's not that I don't trust you, L.A., but look, look, I have a job for you. Wherever you are, a netherrack one go into the boat and dirt one as well. Come on over here. Come back up. There's something on the ground for you over there. Go check it out. Mm -hmm. Stay in a boat. Wait there. You're not flying around anymore until I finish the ceiling on this entire build. So all the way up here, at the top of the dome, the dome is progressing quite nicely. The shape is coming in, like, pretty much exactly perfectly as I visioned. Today, in order to get it all in, I'm still on that plots wave. I have plots on my second monitor and I'm bumping it up layer by layer and basically copying the shapes. However, it was at this very point in the build that inspiration, it found me and a new idea blossomed. Lapis lazuli, turn it into blue dye, turn it around and over here in this crafting table, I can go ahead and make blue stained glass, just plain blue. Next up, after that, we go ahead and swap out these pickaxes. Oh boy, do I need a new one. All right, so hear me out here. I don't exactly know how to pull this one off, but I was imagining maybe blue dots all over this thing. Like, every once in a while, maybe I make the dots a, like a solid shape. Like, always, every single time there's a dot, it's a two by two. But random darker blue dots all over this thing, like every once in a while. See, I love stained glass, and I never really get to use stained glass that much. So every single time I actually like start to use stained glass, I'm reminded of, oh my god, how beautiful is this stuff, and how cool is it to build with too. Now, I'm not going to go too overkill with it. In fact, maybe even. Just so I can really see what I have going on here, I'll turn the shaders off and, and put it in like that. And while we finish up today's build, I think this is the perfect moment to take a look at today's comment of the day. Today's comment of the day is from Sonia, and it's a genius, beautiful, beautiful idea. Our poor Camel, Camelotl, oh man, and Camelotl's friend has been sitting in a hole for far too long. Absolutely need to build a build for the Camel, and maybe even a theory, a proposal. Should I turn that Camel build into a perhaps a farm as well? I kind of been putting off the whole camel build for a long, long time because, I mean, they're the most useful thing in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, definitely. But after filling up today's build and moving further down the fjord, I don't know. I feel like a camel farm or something with it might be in the books really soon. Also, plus with the whole armadillo coming to the world very soon as well, hopefully. With the armadillo coming to the world soon, maybe I could do like a two-in-one build or something like that. I don't know. Just kind of think it all out. Thank you so much for the comment, though, because genuinely, I completely forgot about that camel. Or camels. Uh, both of them. Uh, whoops. We meet again, currently, as I'm en route to old home sweet home. You see, Ale, they're a musical-loving creature just like myself. Oh, wow, you look uh, just as beautiful as the last time I left you. Oh, you look so beautiful with shaders. So gorgeous and beautiful. You see, Ale love music, and for this musical thing, I need to locate a certain thing, and I swear we found that specific, certain, very important, essential thing before. I just maybe didn't move it back over to my house. I definitely found one of those things, though, right? I, The music disc. I, I don't think I have a single music disc in this world. That's crazy. Somebody, <laughs> did we ever find a music disc in this world? Go back and check it. And if I did, where in the world would I have left it? Please, please help me. Well, anyways, the build today, it's truly beginning to fill in our base. Look at how beautiful it looks with the blue dome. And I have dots on it, too. It looks so nice over there. Just peeking out through the tree line. It's gorgeous. Now, you take a seat. You take a seat. I don't want you to get harmed because look at this. I'm an overachiever. Not only have I done the build, but I've done the path going up to the build, too. What I was thinking with this path is it'll probably connect to a main road that'll cut right over from the bridge and then basically like straight down right there. Cutting up the path this way, I did a little bit of lighting so it's like relatively safe over here and then we have the beautiful build, the wonderful build itself. Oh, the dirt, since I have checked it last time, it's filling in slowly but surely. The grass is now slowly becoming a beautiful green grassy tint. What I was thinking all over the place inside of this thing to maybe make it come to life and feel really nice. Uh, maybe what I would do is a little bit of coarse dirt mixed in here as well. Coarse dirt could look pretty nice. 
Now next up, I had this humble little dream, a small tiny vision. This is not something I've ever done inside of this world before, but how about maybe, just maybe a custom tree or two inside of here? I want this alley zone in here where they live and just fly around when I'm not like using them at a farm or something. You know, I want this zone to feel like true paradise for them. Like they're living in here and thriving and loving it. So maybe to make it feel like paradise, we'll bring in some small custom trees. I promise I know how to make a small custom tree. I, I promise, I guarantee I really do. That's a, it's a, it's a thing. So look, I'll uh, be the first to admit it that with this one, the vision is strong, the execution, it will be debatable. Sincerely, I've always wished that I could be one of those players that could just say like, hey, I want a tree right here. And then they whip up some beautiful masterpiece, an artwork of a tree, but I can't figure it out. I don't know how to do it. I, I, I try, I try, I try, and I cry. I can't build custom trees very well, but I can sure try. With all that being said, though, I did have one secret little trick in mind here. One little move that I could pull up my sleeve. See, I like, uh, ambiance of an area. And maybe, to add to the ambiance of this area, inside of this little tree right there, we could put a spore blossom. And then it's gonna release the spores, like, all over the place in this whole area. I can't decide if I want it over there or over there. Guess it doesn't really matter, though. A spore blossom is a spore blossom. It's wonderful. I was also maybe thinking some flowers in here. Maybe at some point I could go back and get some like swamp flowers or corn flowers, but for now the short flowers will do tort flowers. The tall ones, obviously, it has to be pitcher flowers. They're blue. Anyways, the LA, let's take a look at him. Now that we have this fully contained container, we go ahead and let you out of the boat and fly, my friend, fly. Do whatever your heart dreams and desires of. As long as you're inside of this area, you're good, you're golden. The LA, they like music. If I ring this note block, check this out. This note block, while well, I'm ringing it over here, you can't really tell necessarily, but the alley are being linked to it. There's a tiny little particle effect that's playing, like, at the right angle, you can kind of see it, right? It's like a vibration. Shoots over to the alley. So check this. So let's say I have a jukebox right here, and then I have a couple of alley nearby. Maybe I already gave them an item, maybe I didn't. Either way, I ring this jukebox right here, and then for 30 seconds, any nearby alley that heard that with, like, the, the vibration going over to them, they're going to be linked to this jukebox. That's gonna mean if I drop something on the ground and this one's linked to the jukebox, instead of bringing it over to me, it's gonna pick everything up and bring it to the jukebox. If we wanna get a, maybe a little bit more clever with this contraption here, we could link up a couple of hoppers nearby, make sure he's still linked to the jukebox, and hopefully, fingers crossed, LA friend will pick up the dirt, rocket it over to there, and then land it perfectly so the hopper picks it up. Now, to actually pull that off, it can get a little bit tricky. Maybe we'll need more hoppers, put them lower, hopper minecart even below this thing, but yeah. This whole jukebox ringing item drop-off functionality can potentially be insanely, insanely useful in farms if you use it just right. Let's say we had maybe, say, an amethyst farm. The alley flying around, it picks things up. We have a machine ringing the jukebox almost constantly. The alley will fly around, pick everything up, take it over to the machine, and with the right hopper configuration, all of the drops will be thrown inside of the chest. Now, machines like those, those get a little bit more complex, and I feel like it might make more sense for us to talk about them when we're actually using them. So, that's basically how it works. Just keep it in mind for now, and we'll come back around to it once we do it. Another thing the alley likes, not really, I just like it because it's beautiful and terraforming, is rocks. What if I put some rocks in here on the ground and make this this all out, like, own a biome? It's almost like I'm building a zoo or something with all the alley or whatever, but either way, rocks on the ground, that'll really make it come to life, I think. I think that looks pretty nice in here, especially with those shaders. To take an item from an alley and switch it out, interact with it with an empty hand. You might have to, like, jump up or whatever. And after that, then you can go ahead and give it a different item, and then it has that item. LA are music loving creatures. Oh, this pains me. It actually genuinely makes me so sad that I can't show this off today. Inside of the crafting table, we put a bunch of planks like that. Then we put a diamond to dead center. And the very first jukebox of this entire world is crafted. It's ours. If I place this jukebox out and then I put a music disc in this box, well, music would start playing. A last ditch effort. That's what they call this right here. Now we send ourselves plummeting all the way to the bottom of the world. You see, uh, a couple episodes back, when we were talking about branch mining, I remember hearing a suspiciously suspicious amount of zombies over here in a biome that they should not exist, the deep dark biome. That led me to believe that maybe somewhere down here we have a spawner or something. Um... Aha! Yeah, 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 there we go! I was gonna say, okay, never mind, but there we go. It sounds like there's a spawner, maybe up this hill or something. 
what I wanted to do was maybe just shoot our shot here. With it being the deep dark biome, there should be no mob. Yeah, yeah, there should be no mobs and all. Either the biome ends, but I think that is highly unlikely. Or maybe we have a, hmm, do we have a spawner perhaps? Spawner? Oh, we're close. We're so close. It's loud. Where are you? Oh, we do. It blended in the shaders. They tricked me. It blends in. We do have a spawner. Now, my question here is, excuse me, sir. Do you leave me alone? Excuse me. No, baby Satan. Not today. Not today. Not today. Child of Satan, I'm sorry. I would not usually do this to small being, but I have to. You leave me, but no option. All right, so this is our last chance to maybe be able to pull it off in our world today. If we can't to pull it off. Oh, careful. Oh, careful, careful. If we can't pull it off here today, we'll just have to do it another time, but... <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. We can pull it off today for sure. A zombie spawner inside of the deep dark underneath the base. And it's not one, but two beautiful music discs. Ha <laughs> ha. The alley. It is a beautiful music-loving being. If we were to say, play a little bit of music right here from that, okay, it's a terrifying one, but that's fine, it's fine, it doesn't matter. We play a little bit of music with an alley nearby, they start to dance, it's kind of beautiful. Even better, if I walk up to one of these alley and give it an amethyst, it replicates, it clones itself while the music is playing nearby. Now after that, for the new one and the OG one, it's on a five minute cooldown, I can't do it again for a little bit. But this alley has successfully been duplicated. We're not not only the proud owner of two alley, but no, no. Alas, instead, we have four alley. And anytime I need more alley, with this jukebox and a music disc in here, that combo and a little bit of amethyst sorts from the farm right over there. Oh, it's no big deal. Today, we have not only retrieved the alley, we've talked all about it. We built a beautiful looking home for it, if I say so myself, but awesome. In a sense, we've kind of built ourselves an alley farm as well. At Sunset here today, what do you think of today's build? Did you like how it turned out? Does it fit into the world nicely or do I need to remove it all? You let me know. Now the LA, there is actually quite a bit to this mob. We're going to definitely talk more about it and how to use it once we actually start using it. But if you're looking for even more on the LA right now, check out my everything series episode on the LA. It's a little bit old, but all the information is 100% accurate and hasn't been changed at all. So it's perfect. Thank you all so much for watching. Tap like, subscribe for more episodes. And if you want early episodes, check out my Patreon link below. My patrons, the big tiny Pixie Phantom, Clay S, Nick C, Arlo, aka Bobby Bobby, and MinecraftMojo.com. Thank you so much. Until tomorrow, I'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody.